Hi, we're here today in the Axiom Photo Lab building woofers. Um, Ian recently, actually yesterday, made an announcement on the message boards that got everybody excited about a new high power woofer for the LFR and a new model that's going to be coming out shortly called the M100. Um, He's asked me to do this video because I'm the one responsible for the woofer um, and hopefully no, no blame if anything happens. Uh, but uh, one of the things that we wanted to do when we developed the LFR that was the first system that we did with three woofers, um, it, uh, we've got amazing reviews, amazing customer feedback, it's an incredible product. Um, but we're always striving to improve things and one of the areas when I started looking at uh, our six and a half inch woofer that we've been using for many years in the, the M80 and, and all of our other products that use that woofer. Um, there's always a number of areas that you can, you can improve and uh, in a discussion with Ian, I wanted to take the already high power handling level of the woofers we're using in the M80 and the LFR to another level. And we thought it would be a good time to actually introduce that woofer in a brand new model called the M100. Now, uh, the biggest change between the current six and a half inch woofer and this new woofer is in the voice coil. And this is really the element along with, the, along with your amplifier and the magnetic motor system of the woofer. This is what's actually doing the work to move the cone. And I've got on top here, you can see that's an M80 current M80 woofer voice coil and the new voice coil is below it and it's an inch and a half in diameter rather than an inch in diameter. Now why do we care about that? Well there's more copper, more wire on the larger voice coil and it also has a larger aluminum former, this is called, that the coil is wound on. What it means is that that coil can dissipate more heat and heat is really the enemy when you're driving a woofer at high levels because woofers and tweeters are naturally fairly inefficient. They only convert, you know, fractions of a percent up to, in some higher efficiency drivers, a couple of percent of the actual amplifier power energy into acoustic energy and the rest of that is lost as heat. So dissipating heat is very important and it's one of the reasons that we increase the voice coil size for these new woofers. Now the penalty of increasing the diameter and the size of the voice coil is that the weight goes up. And more weight means either the woofer is going to have less output um, unless you compensate for it. And the way you compensate for it is that you increase the magnetic strength of what's called the motor. And the motor really, I've got one here, consists of three parts. One's called the top plate. There's a ceramic permanent magnet and there's a T-yoke. Now, all of these parts are significantly larger um, than our current six and a half inch woofer. And this is simply to overcome the additional mass that we're dealing with in the larger voice coil. Behind us here, Mike's uh, putting together one of these woofers. And the reason we're set up in here is we're actually doing a pre-production run of a small batch of these new woofers uh, so that we have a larger sample group that we can do some internal um, testing and evaluation on. And along with bigger motor system, bigger voice coil, we wanted to increase what's called the X max or the linear travel. So all that is, is that tells you how far the woofer can move up and down before it starts to lose uh, or come out of the magnetic field. As soon as that happens, the distortion goes through the roof, goes way up, and you want to avoid that. So having as much uh, linear excursion or X-Max is always a good thing. It means you can drive the woofer harder with more power and not, not get high levels of distortion. So 
Part of that was achieved through the winding length of the voice coil or the amount of wire that's wound on, on the voice coil former. But we were also stuck with a problem with there's a limitation in how far the surround of our current cone will actually flex. So even if we made the voice coil longer, we could get more travel, but it would stop at some point when the surround was stretched to its maximum. So we've actually come up with a new surround. Can I have that for a second? Thank you. A new surround, and I don't know how easy this will be to see, but it results in almost 30% more travel than the current surround that we're using. So by changing the voice coil, we've improved power handling. Um, we've improved the amount of linear excursion, and the new surround helps us to actually achieve that linear excursion without putting the brakes on. One of the other things that we've looked at is we, a number of years ago, went to a two-part epoxy glue for bonding the cone to the damper or spider and the spider to the voice coil. And this glue allows us to achieve far higher temperatures without a failure happening. And we've actually, in these new high-power woofers, we're actually essentially embedding both sides of that assembly with glue. So there's two beads of glue. And what that allows us to do is really reduce the failure rate from mechanical failure on these woofers almost down to zero. Since we've made those changes to our subwoofer drivers, for instance, we've had absolutely zero failures on those drivers. So you can see there's a number of areas where we've made improvements. Really, at the end of the day, it just means that the system will play even louder and cleaner um, before it starts making any noise or distortion. And in the testing that we've been doing with LFR and M100 with these new woofers, we run out of amplifier power on an ADA 1500 before the speaker gives up. So we've now got a system where there's really very little dynamic limitation and I think people are going to find that it's a, it's a huge improvement. So thanks for joining us today.